let's get into some of the details of this argument. First thing um, is that Pinker is going to insist that there's no cultural progress in language sophistication. And this is part of what his part of the, his argument that language is not something that gets passed down culturally as a kind of inheritance, you know, in the same way that like uh, you can imagine like recipes could be passed down from generation to generation and you you know, you wouldn't be able to um, come up with that recipe just through your own kind of innate instincts about you know, how to make some particular food. It has to be cult passed down culturally and he's saying language is not this way, right? And so language is not something that gets passed down culturally and therefore there's no cultural progress in, in the development of language, right? Um, you know, so, you know, so he has this evidence when, when, in which he's, he compares or he, he, he talks about this other researcher's comparison of English with this uh, Kivunjo, this Bantu language, in which the, the, the indication is that there's no sense in which one language can be thought to be um, simpler or more complex than the other. In, in fact, in, in, the, in the particular aspect in, in which um, this, this researcher, Joan Bresnan, is making the comparison, English seems to be much simpler than Kivunjo in the way it constructs words, right? And so, you know, the, here uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the way the English construction is, you know, there's a sentence, she baked me a brownie. Um, there is an indirect object like me or her is placed after the verb uh, to indicate the beneficiary of the act. So there's a basic, you know, so there's a kind of basic structure there. And what, what she's indicating here is that in the Kavunjo language, that type of structure that all of the uh, all of the different of the different possibilities are all integrated within that within the one word uh, in, 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 within the one verb, and that in fitting it all inside the verb it 's much more complicated there 's all these different possibilities there 's seven prefixes and suffixes, two moods, fourteen tenses. Uh, the verb has to agree with the subject, the object, and its benefactive noun, each of which comes in 16 genders. It's a very, very complicated way of constructing a particular verb. And so the, this is an example of how you know, two different languages, they're very different. They have complexity in different areas of the language, but both of them have the kind of equal overall complexity, right? So, so essentially, again, what's, what's going on is, she, is, is Pinker wants to point to the fact that that complexity is not something that comes through a kind of cultural invention, but already in every single language develops spontaneously and that complexity and, uh, and the same underlying structure is kind of biologically pre-programmed, right? Uh, and so therefore the kind of cultural argument about language of, of it being something that develops gradually over time through cultural development is not something um, that, that Pinker is going to agree with, right? Um, so, you know, th the basic assumption here then is that differences between languages are not an indication of sophistication. So clearly um, arguing against Rousseau, but really, in a sense, arguing also against uh, Warburton, for instance, when Warburton was sort of indicating that there's a progression in the way language is structured. You recall he had sort of this language of action, and then the, the fable, and then the metaphor, and sort of this progression in the way language develops. Again, Pinker is arguing against that and saying, no, every language already in the beginning is just as complex and as much a human language as any other language, right? So there is no progression like that. In fact, you know, every, every child then is really developing that full sophistication of language anew, right? The other piece of this, uh, this argument is an indication that universal grammar, and this is the counterclaim, this is the, argument, the, 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 the claim that Pinker is arguing against, is that universal grammar is not the result um, of a specific instinct, rather, but rather the result of the needs of human experience and the limitations on human information processing, that there's a sort of general way in which language has to develop um, given sort of the, the particular ways in which 
the human mind works in any case, right? And then it's not a specific instinct, but really just uh, a kind of part of the way language would have to develop um, because of, of the way the mind works in general, right? So this is the other argument that he wants to refute, right? He, he wants to say that the language instinct is very specific to humans and it, it's, it's part of a, a particular language module. It's not just about the way th the brain functions in general, right? So, uh, so, and that's kind of linked to that other argument about culture because in a sense, you know, if, if it's about general human mind processing, then maybe it's, it's there's a kind of um, link between that and the cultural argument, but I'll go with, over that in a second. So, um, so there's kind of overall then there's kind of three ways of understanding the origin of human language that Pinker is kind of is laying out for us, and then sort of picking out the one that he's going to, to stick with, right? So you know, number two, that's his his explanation for the origin of language uh, as an innate module, right? So language is this spe separate mechanism in the brain. Um, that always functions in the same way in humans, comparable to like the eye or the ear. It's a, it's a specific, yeah, it's a, it's a very specific mechanism that has a specific way of functioning. It's always going to function in that same way because it's biologically pre-programmed. And then the functioning of language is independent then of the functioning of human reason in general, right? So you recall uh, Hadder had this argument that, that the functioning of reason and the functioning of language were really two aspects of the same thing and Pinker is going to argue against that idea that, that, the, that the functioning of reason and the functioning of language are somehow two aspects of the same. He wants to differentiate those two things. So yeah, so that number two, that's Pinker's argument and then so he's arguing against both option number one and option number three, right? So uh, he's arguing against language as a cultural invention, right? Arguing against the idea that it has to be taught from parents to children, but right, but he's really indicated that the children really, in a sense, know language from, from the time they're born, in a sense, right? And he's arguing against the idea that, that language is passed from generation to gen generation, like a recipe or like a religion that has to be kind of learned in its specifics, otherwise you really have no idea what it would be or could be, right? And then the, the other idea um, that he's arguing against then is that language is part of the structure of thought um, <coughs> and in, in this theory of the origin of language thought itself would have to be organized as a set of symbols needing interpretants you know this is kind of what we were we were getting from from Peirce where where for Peirce the logic and thought itself really needs to, to function as a set of symbols having interpretants and in which language you know, every specific human language would just be another example of this kind of symbolic structure of thought. And so uh, Pinker is really, in fact, arguing against that idea as well, right? So, uh, in, and, and he sees those two ideas as linked, right? The number one and number two, he sees these two ideas as linked uh, because if, if language is part of the general structure of thought, then um, you would you would need to have that kind of cultural tradition in order to develop the specifics of language uh, because those specific structures of language wouldn't be given in, uh, in the general structure of thought, right? So, so, uh, so he's, his, his argument is that, you know, if, 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 if language is part of the structure of thought, then you would need to have this sort of cultural um, tradition part in order to develop a language. Uh, you couldn't get it through the general structures of thought. Right, and so, he, so, so, the, so the way he's arguing is that because he can identify a universal grammar, that universal grammar has to be something that's in the brain that, that's, that's specific, that's separate from thought, and that also then is able to explain the way that language uh, is able to pop up in children in the same way in every, uh, in every culture, in every case, right?